Everybody's heard of these world-famous landmarks like the Colosseum in Rome, or even the incredible canals of Venice, or even the breathtaking village of Positano on the Amalfi Coast. But there's another place in Italy, almost frozen in time, entrenched in their traditions, where many travelers have never ventured off or discovered. A place where you can take in some of the most beautiful mountainous landscapes and go to a beautiful tropical beach like this one all in the same day. A place with ancient castles off the edge of a cliff and with vineyards as far as the eye can see. After spending nearly a month exploring Abruzzo, seeing what the region has to offer, there were definitely some moments where I really got out of my comfort zone. One of the experiences that really stood out to me was exploring the trabocos that are littered all across the Adriatic Sea, an ancient method of fishing by the locals, no longer able to keep up with modern day technology, an old wooden platform now converted into restaurants, where I would try some of the local cuisine that I'm definitely not used to trying. It's like pink octopus. But there were some dishes that I did enjoy, like the classic spaghetti avangole or spaghetti of the clam. So good. This is the best thing we had, I think. My favorite. For you? Yeah, just slightly. <laughs> you can order after this again if you want. After, I don't know, 10 courses. And that's it. Do you like that? Wow. Excellent. You wash down the octopus with that. Yeah. Beer. Oui, avec le vin. Good idea. Puis je vais mettre les deux pieds dans le sang. Les deux pieds dans l'eau. It's, it's very, it's very bitter. bitter. There's something so special about the fresh air just rolling off the Adriatic Sea. Eating whatever was freshly caught in the morning. Drinking some of the best local wines of Abruzzo. And spending great quality time with friends and family. Speaking of going into uncomfortable situations, we then headed off to a little village with, I'm not sure how to really put it, a unique tradition that's dated back thousands of years. And this easily has to be one of the most memorable experiences I've ever had throughout my travels. We've just arrived in Kokulo. It's a very beautiful drive, just the drive itself. So it's a small little village kind of surrounded by mountains here. And we're just waiting for the uh, ceremony to finish. And they weren't joking, there are little snakes everywhere wrapping around kids' necks and it's a little bit scary, but... <laughs> I'm actually legitimately terrified right now. Okay, yeah, I'm done. I'm good. And there's got to be, what, 20, 30 snakes at least on it. And it's just marching through the town right now, going down to the town square. That has to be one of the strangest things I've ever seen. Known as the Green Lung of Italy, or the greenest region in all of Europe, we wouldn't be doing justice to Abruzzo without mentioning many of their beautiful national parks. With half of its territory being national parks, it's just waiting to be discovered. Tonight we are probably making the most popular dish in Abruzzo. It is called arrastacini. Essentially what it is is a lamb skewer. So what they'll do 
is they'll take a little piece of lamb, then a piece of fat, then a piece of lamb, and they'll continue on on the skewer. And this is probably one of the most popular dishes, I would say, in Abruzzo. I don't think you can find this anywhere else in Italy, so we're going to show you guys exactly kind of how they make it in the traditional way. And they take making arrostacini so, so seriously that they actually have this barbecue that's specifically for arrostacini and nothing else, just to make arrostacini. There is a lot of steps involved. So you do have to take, so in Italian it's called calbone, and basically what that is is charcoal. So it's like a little charcoal barbecue. We put it into the fire starter here and we have to wait for that to be perfectly ready before we spread this out. And I'll show you more of how we laid the actual skewers down on it. It's the type we like to use, it's actually from Argentina. Burns really hot and slow. So we have two barbecues going right now. The one on the left here is for the arrostacini. And then the one on the right here, we're going to do the, what is it, pancetta? pancetta? Which is basically like bacon, I guess. I it bacon. looks like bacon. We're just going to wait a little bit more because actually, and then we're going to spread them out through here. And it'll be very yeah. fast. But I guess part of making the arrostacini is the patience because it does take a lot of time. It does, but it's well Waiting. worth it. Well worth it, definitely. That's always a tricky step. I'm at least five, six feet away and you can feel the heat coming from this thing, like it's so hot. So then he's spreading it out all the way to the edges where the rastuccini is going to go. If you have only 20, you just fill up to here. 30, 20, 10. We're on to the next step, so we're going to start putting the raw rastuccini all along the uh, barbecue here. You notice? Meat, fat, beef, fat. You generally want them to be about a medium rare and you can see from just how small they are that it doesn't take too much time to cook the arancini. Take about five or six. Could be like a an evanta in the same crunch. So smoky, they look so good. You can see a lot of them will start getting like a gold crispy kind of gold brown there. That's exactly what you're looking for, for it to be crispy, but still a little bit medium inside. It's one custom that I think the Italians do need to adopt is they do salt them before, but they don't salt bathe them. So I'm just gonna... If the Abruzzians didn't take their arrostacini making seriously enough, they actually have like a container and its only purpose is just to store arrostacini when you're about to eat it, put it on the table. And once they're done, we put them into the little container here and then bring that to the dinner table. And put some in there. And I'm gonna try my first one. They're apparently better when they're right out fresh, nice and piping hot. Holy shit. Unbelievable, probably the best arrestacini, I think. It's amazing. You have double. They were stuck together, so it was oh, an these, excuse to have two. What a difference, huh? Amazing. This is a good you have to producer. try this if you come to Abruzzo. After we finished eating some delicious arrostacini, we were lucky enough to visit some of the wineries in the area, tasting its world-renowned Montepulciano red wine. After spending some time with some of the producers, you could really see how passionate they were about their wine, and that it was more than just a drink to them, but it was truly a part of their culture and who they were. Abruzzo doesn't just have some of the best wine in the world, but it also has some of the most stunning preserved medieval villages in Italy and walking around them, exploring them, is one of my favorite things to do in Abruzzo. There's so much beauty in this town. Like my dad was saying that they're almost, the locals here are almost desensitized to it. They're just so used to it. Walking around these villages, you almost feel like you've stepped back in time to a world that is completely different than what you're used to. As the sun began to set behind the Gran Sasso mountain on our last night in Abruzzo, we began preparing our last meal. Talking about some of the adventures and memories that we've made here in Abruzzo. But there's one thing that I couldn't really help thinking is the next time that I would return to Abruzzo. Thanks so much for watching the video guys. I hope you really, really liked it. If you do enjoy my content, make sure to like this video. It really does make a huge difference in pushing out so more people can watch it. 
Also make sure to subscribe, I'm really trying to get to that 1k mark. So as you can see, obviously I'm back home in Canada. So I'll have one more video of uh, my adventures in Italy and then I'll be shooting a lot more just around Canada here. So until then, I'll see you in the next week's video.